this is Jim Snell in the United States of America with TRS Motos USA. Well, it's October 2016. What a spectacular racing season TRS has had all over the world. Here in the United States, my nephew, Jesse, won a national championship on the TRS 1 300cc. At the end of the season, we were working on our champ bikes. This one behind me is mine. And we decided that Jesse would start riding a 250cc. So we took the 300cc engine out of his bike and I took it all apart for a number of reasons. To study it and to show it to the world and also just to look and see what it looked like after a full racing season. I was pleasantly surprised. So the engine you'll see in this video is mostly the 300cc engine that we took out of Jesse's bike. As I said, he's now riding a 250cc TRS-1, doing quite well on it actually. So I've made a series of videos, one of them about engine repair and another one about the overall aspects of these bikes, pointing out a few things and some of the basic maintenance, etc. So thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for your continued support. Enjoy. Let's take this engine apart now. First we're going to remove the cylinder. We'll take the four bolts off. No real reason to have to take off the head. If you have the spark plug removed, the cylinder will come right off, then the piston. Then we're going to take off the intake manifold. It has four bolts. Then the clutch cover. And we're going to take the clutch cover bolts out. But note, this one here, there's a small arrow cast into it. Also has a copper washer. That's the drain plug for the water pump as well as being a clutch cover bolt. We take the clutch cover bolts out right to left and then I lay them out on the workbench right to left so that I can remember which one went where. This is very simple and this is how I do it. There's a clutch cover gasket that has a couple of locating bushings there and also this little aluminum stud is actually the kickstart return stop which I will show later. It's what the cover looks like inverted. The water pump has a plastic impeller. That's what it looks like. The water actually goes from the pump through the cases and up through the cylinder. Here we have the magneto cover and it's aluminum and inside is the stator. All the bolts on the mag cover are the same. The stator Magneto has a huge nut, size 27 millimeters. We'll take that off. And there's a special puller for getting off the flywheel. And I like to use one of these little, it's a little rollerball bushing thing that sits on the end of the, of the crank and it protects the crank from the pressure of the tool, the puller tool. I put a little silicone grease on there as well and the puller tool two wrenches two big wrenches and and take off the flywheel on the left case just below the shifting shaft is a magnetic drain plug and behind that is one of the center case bolts i'm going to point that out now and you can see here i've taken it out and i have a magnet and i've gotten a hold of it so that's a hidden one there. That's, you can't split the cases without knowing that one's in there. The rest of the case bolts are fairly obvious in their locations. And then there are two of them that also have copper washers because they seal oil galleys that feed and return from the left side crank bearing. So there's a copper washer there on both of those center case bolts. Here we can see one of the crank bearings. You can see a small hole there in the side of the bearing race. In the left case have, there is an oil feed galley I previously pointed out there. And that hole in that bearing must align with the little dimple that's on the interior of the case have. That lets the oil feed into that little hole in the side wall of the bearing. It's critical that 
that dimple and that hole you see aligns with the hole in that bearing race. There are other brands that use this same concept to lubricate the left side crank bearing. This only applies to the left hand side bearing. The right bearing is lubricated by oil that comes into the back side of it uh, behind the primary driven gear. This is what the left case have looks like with the magneto taken off and I again I lay out my center case bolts on the workbench. On the right side of the engine is the clutch and you'll see a few little parts that may be stuck to the clutch when you take off the outer clutch cover. This is what the interior clutch cover looks like. There's a slave piston and that's what the piece looks like and then it has a flat bearing and a little bushing. This is the primary driven gear. It's a big Allen. Before we take the clutch apart, we're going to get this big bolt loose. Then we take out the center bolt in the clutch, which is hollow, uh, so that the engine can vent. And it has a, a thick washer with it, you can see in this picture. When you remove the clutch, you will see a special washer. The flat side faces out. The back side has a step in it, which faces the bearing. This is the front side. Here's what the clutch looks like removed from the engine without the basket and the back side of it. It's billet machined. And then we have the basket, the front side, and the back side. The gear you see on the interior of the back side is actually part of the kickstart gear mechanism. It's the one that moves the basket so the basket can turn over the crank. We're going to take off the kickstart intermediate gear next, which is right there between the basket and the kickstart shaft has two washers a clip a bearing now we're going to take out the little aluminum kickstart stop and it's kind of a little trick you have to get under it with a screwdriver and I rotate the big screwdriver and that draws that that up it just slides in there but it's a mild interference fit you don't have to take it all the way out to get out the kickstart shaft but you do have to raise it to get the, the shaft out. And there you can see the kickstart spring goes in a little hole in the cases. There's a washer there on the end of the kickstart shaft assembly. You can see some residual oil down in there where the kickstart pivots. There's a little feed hole on the side you can see. Now we can go ahead and take that aluminum kickstart stop out if you'd like. That's what it looks like when it's out. Now we already had that bolt loose on the primary driven gear so we're going to, again I'm going to use a little protector bushing so my puller tool doesn't harm the end of the crank. I have a special tool here that works for these gears. Um, you put it over the gear and then there's a compression ring that you press down over the tool and that makes the tool grip the gear and then again two wrenches and the gear is interference fit but semi mild and then there it is removed from the end of the right side of the crank and that's what it looks like with the gear taken off you can see the crank bearing right in there this is the shifting mechanism and we're going to take that apart next and first we withdraw the shifting shaft it comes right out and be aware there's a flat washer a machined one that sits right there so pick that up and, and make sure that gets put back on the shifting shaft so you don't lose track of it later. As you can see here, I've slid it over the shaft. Then there's a small bushing that sits right here on this pin on the shifting mechanism. You can see I'm picking it up here. You can see the, the wider part faces down. There are two Allen bolts that hold this retention ring over the shifting mechanism. Take that off. Don't lose track of those two bolts. One's a little different than the other. And you can see I set that little bushing in the middle there so I wouldn't lose track of where it is. And then we can pull off this, this spring-loaded shifting pawl piece. It has two little levers and two little buttons and two little springs. It can fly apart if you're not careful. So watch out when you take that out. I'm showing you here how it goes together, how those little levers sit in there and those little pins are hollow on one end so the spring can go in there. 
Got some good detail shots for you here in case you, it comes apart on you and you need to put it back together. The next thing we have in the center of the shift drum is the little center pivot for the ratcheting mechanism. And it's 10 millimeters. You unscrew it counterclockwise, take it out. That's what holds this plate on the drum. Here you can see actually the little ball there on the right center. There's a ball spraying plug. It is not an oil drain plug. It's the, the detent ball. Then that piece comes off. And this is what it looks like removed from the bike in the back side. See that little hole off center that goes into a little pin that I'm pointing to here that's on the shift drum. So the, you always get that perfectly back in place because it's important because neutral is a little different on that piece for finding neutral. Okay, so we've got everything apart. The bolts all out. You know, these center cases on the TRS, they're not difficult to separate. It's really amazing. You don't need to pry or beat on them or anything. They just come off. But you do want to watch a little bit when you're taking things apart like this because sometimes a washer will stick to the oil and then you won't know where it goes or something. So I'm going to try and point out some of those things here. And sure enough, a washer did stick inside the case uh, to one of the bearings. And I'm going to point out right here that uh, we do have locating bushings as well on the center case and we have again an aluminized center gasket but hey I found a washer stuck to the bearing so I'm going to put that back over onto the transmission right where it goes so I don't lose track of that either all right so we can start taking the parts out um, there is a bearing on the, on the case have that has a bushing that's part of it. It's a two-piece bearing. You can see that that goes into, it has large rollers, and then that piece makes up that bearing. Okay, and it often stays on the transmission, so be aware. Here's what it looks like when you're looking down in there. So I've got my washer that was stuck on there back on, on the transmission. This is what the crank looks like. And, and uh, that's what it looks like when you remove it from the bike. And again, you're not going to have to beat on it or anything to take it out. And the transmission looks like this when it's removed. And the shifting forks, amazing, they're marked left and right. There's two that are symmetrical opposites of each other. That one says SR and one says SL for left and right. And then the other one is different. And that different one goes on on the front near the crank and to the drum so what you're looking at when the transmission's out looking down into that that left case have there you go and this is really well thought out this engine I, i'm honestly i know i represent the brand but i'm impressed Thank you for watching my video.